This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com forward slash rogue and get 10% off your first purchase and a free trial. Yeah, but use that promo code rogue, R-O-G-U-E, spell it right. What is the biggest difference between actual super criminals today and super villains? Like comic book super villains? Yeah. Style. Okay, okay, such as? Super villains have style. You got uh, Magneto with that sweet helmet and a cape. Not we need helmet. to get capes. No, I keep okay, telling you. Okay, capes. that helmet, look, 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 look. That helmet is so bad, they had to make it a joke in the movies. No. They had to make it a punchline. You're not helping your argument. The uh, Darth Vader head thing that the Legion of Doom would land in in a swamp? Still not helping. You don't want one of those? Next up is what? The Riddler with his question marks all over his body is going to sell you a book on how to get free money from the government? Okay, he abandoned that a while back. He's actually very dapper. Yeah, now, now. he's touring comedian Andy dick. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. No, I can't see the Riddler. <laughs> Andy Dick would be the best Riddler. I can't see the Riddler as anyone but Andy Dick now. And it's just in there. It's like that thought climbed into my brain and it just said, well, this is where I live now and I'm not going anywhere. Hey man, we got a bunch of articles over at themodernrogue.com and today we're gonna to talk about five criminals who took their crimes ridiculously over the top. And this article is by Polly Puiso? Yeah, I think that, that, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we begin with who? Uh, Frank Sprenz uh, was a guy who uh, had his pilot's license, uh, presumably. He was landing his plane in front of banks, going in and robbing them and then getting in his plane and flying away. This is around what time? Mid 20th century? Uh, I think this is the 50s. Yeah, right? yeah. Like the Okay, so this is back at a time that number one, there's no GPS tracking. You don't have to worry about the TSA. Mm -hmm. You just land, you're like, give me all your monies. And then the cops show up, they're like, what happened? They're like, guy came, took the money, where is he? And then they just point to the sky. <laughs> yeah. Like it's the middle opening act of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah, and after a while, he got so successful, I think he got a little bit uh, bold. Cocky? Yeah. yeah. No, he <laughs> would just swoop down, have some bruises. Yeah. It's like that's a little conspicuous, right? So he gets the nickname the Flying Bank Robber, well deserved, and he makes the FBI's 10 most wanted. At some point, the FBI sort of gives up, is just like, just give us this one guy. Just give us this one dude and we'll call it even. <laughs> yeah, and eventually J. Edgar Hoover said, all right, we're gonna get him. And they still had trouble catching him. He ended up going to like uh, multiple prisons, including down in Mexico. And uh, I believe, wait, hold on. Am I remembering this right? He was one of the last people released from Alcatraz, is exactly. that right? Exactly, yeah. I wonder if they uh, made him leave last, just as like, oh, Mr. Hotshot. No, 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 not yet, not yet. All right, so obviously, first entry, first place. Yeah, Frank's friends uh, flying around all he wants, hanging out, having a good time. Next up, we got a guy who robbed a bank vault with an anti-tank gun. Oh, I which love I love. It. It's almost as like he feels threatened by the bank vault, so he just busts out an anti-tank gun. This is how you would rob a bank in, in Counter-Strike. You would just, you know, dig out a, a hole and get inside. <laughs> This is Joel Singer and his crew in the 1960s. He went to Syracuse and decided to rob an armored car company. Oh yeah, not just an armored car. He says, well, why why have the Brinks van when the cow gives us the milk for free? He's That's like, exactly what he said. Why don't we rob the entire company, right? <laughs> yeah. So of course the inspiration was he looked at their giant bank vault. He's like, man, that's like a tank. If only there was a gun that was able to penetrate tanks. So they got one from the Russian-Finnish Winter War. It was decommissioned and uh, about 30 shells fired into this vault. It finally gave. But when you have weapons of war, especially something like an anti-tank gun, they're gonna be able to find out where it came from, right? Yeah, in this case, it wasn't hard for authorities to figure out like, well, this is clearly an anti-tank weapon. Uh, who do we know that has anti-tank weapons? I mean, these aren't really floating around at pawn shops. I right? mean, un unless they're located in cyberspace. I oh. bought one in Ultima Online just the other day. <laughs> uh, 35 gold pieces. <laughs> All right, so where do we rank this? Ahead of, of, our, of our flying gun or no? I am going to say that this one is uh, ahead of uh, our Frank Sprenz uh, flying bank robber. Thing. Man, I gotta, I gotta keep Frank up at the top because he had that swashbuckling style, you know, swooping into bars, grabbing beers, flying to the next thing, taking more of the money. But I'm also picturing the night that Joel Singer was getting into this bank vault and all of his confederates, his buddies are waiting there. And then Joel rolls up with an anti-tank weapon and they're like, what, 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 what? <laughs> and he's like, that's right, mother <laughs> All 
All right, next up we have a literal Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, this is life imitating art. There were a number of guys in uh, the United Kingdom who were staging heists, pulling ATMs. They were dragging them right out of their moorings. Oh, and not only that, but they were they were cutting them with all kinds of fancy gas torches. Then they would have their super vehicles that they would run off with everything. They would do the freaking real Knight Rider move of having their supercar be stored inside of a semi. They were living in these motor homes that they were pulling around constantly on the run in the UK, going small town to small town. And I assume, what, they lived forever happy as could be? Oh, absolutely. No, uh, whenever uh, art is imitating life and they're driving around all of these badass fancy cars and stealing ATMs like that, you're gonna make a lot of noise. So who stopped them but some Scottish law enforcement officers blasted their car and my caught favorite, them all. My favorite part about this is the quote from the judge. Hold on, let me get it right, hold on. The overwhelming impression that remains with me is one of breathtaking arrogance on your part, which not gonna lie, kind of impressive. It actually sounds kind of like a lot of fun. Okay, did they take number one in your book? Number one is still anti-tank, Joel Singer. Number two, the flying bank robber. Number three, these Fast and Furious knobs. You know, okay, I'm with you 100%, because look, ultimately, they're, they're copying what they saw in the movies. Not so yeah. impressive. Yeah, you should be inspiring movies, not copying them. That's really cool, wow, oh my god. The organization, the adrenaline. Ah, uh, they're probably a bunch of dickhead dude bros. I don't know if we're gonna agree on this one. A 200 member high tech pickpocket gang called a Cannon to the Wiz? Cannon to the Wiz. Uh, out of what, Chicago area? Uh, out of the Chicago area, yes, they would pickpocket people, but then they had people in vans standing by with printers and scanners and the ability to immediately fabricate the identification that they stole from these people. So this is the part that impresses me. Their genius is that they took what is normally a petty theft of stealing a wallet and instead turned it into high grade identity theft, including something they called split deposits. They would take the wallets that they stole, they would create identities for each, they would use those identities to write each other's checks to defraud the banks that's pretty next level brilliant, right? They were very effective and very efficient until they stole from the wrong person. They pickpocketed the wife of the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke. Whoopsie doodle. Uh, <laughs> That's a big whoopsie doodle. Yeah, yeah. And so, as you can imagine, that got a lot of attention and a lot of resources directed to it, and uh, they shut them down pretty quickly. After okay, that. this is also, at this point, you have an army, and it's hard because we're trying to rank everybody. I'm still gonna keep the flying really? nice guy. I mean, look, he's one guy who yeah. is doing the impossible. Yeah. I believe 200 people can accomplish anything. So, I, I will put them above the Fast and the Furious guys, though. Okay, so you're gonna rank them third. Yeah. Okay, uh, I am going to rank these guys. I think they're my favorite. What? I think they're my favorite, yeah. Teamwork the, makes the dream the, work the for you. The teamwork, the efficiency, the level of organization, and I'm picturing a really fast-paced montage of seeing this happening in the opening, like, 10 minutes of a film Man, before I'm the credits I'm seeing roll. a bunch of people who might as well be working at a Best Buy. They're like, <laughs> well, now well, I'm printing out the thing. Hold on one second. I'm but writing a check. They dared to dream outside the confines of those blue shirts. Yeah, but I bet they looked awful in a, in a, uh, uh, what do you call them? Sarape? No, 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 not a sarape. Wait, what are they called? Sarong? Call? No, uh, uh, the thing you wrap around your neck to keep warm. A scarf. Thank you. <laughs> Oh boy, this is a big one. Describe for me the heist of the century. Okay, this one was in uh, Paraguay. In, in 2017, right? Yeah, not too long ago in the, the Ciudad del Este, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, where uh, one night uh, a bunch of heavily armed thugs show up and just start lobbing Molotov cocktails at the police department, blocking off the roads with flaming cars. They even had anti-aircraft guns in case the police came in with helicopters. Okay, why would you attack the police? We're, we, they don't have any money. I mean, maybe evidence money? It's a distraction. You're gonna attack the police department with some intensity, but really, while you're doing that and drawing all of the resources over here, here's your real target. Which is? It is a place called ProSegur, a private security company 
Oh. Which seems like even more reckless to no, attack, No, 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 right? this is brilliant though, because if you're attacking the police, when the police need help, who are they gonna call? They're gonna call the private security company, private security company gonna go help the police, and then guess where all the money is at the private security company? Yes. These criminals had a reasonably large attack force, and so they were able to hold all of these people off for a very long time while they were going for the near 50 million in cash and valuables in the private security company's headquarters. <sighs> Look, we kind of grade on creativity here, and this is huge and audacious and in an unbelievable show of force. But it's like, I don't know, it's kind of the, they're it's, describing a war? Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty nasty. I mean, these guys were prepared, right? They were dropping caltrops and explosives and everything. Caltrops, you know, in case somebody was walking around barefoot like a ninja and wanted to actually <laughs> exactly. stab their you feet. You never know when ninjas are after you, so just be safe. Be Explosive prepared, caltrops. right? Yeah. And so, yeah, these guys were really prepared, but the police force and the security company actually ended up kind of holding them off so they only got away with eight million. Only. Only. Yeah, right. got him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good job, everybody. You know what? Can I, can I, can I give my number one slot? Is this your number one slot? No, to the police who defended against these asshats. <laughs> yes. And in yes. second place is is the flying stealing guy. That that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so where do you rank these guys? They don't make my list. They don't make my list. They're just, just showing up with guns and yeah, bombs and it's everything. a literal army stealing money. Okay, that's fair. All right, so what are your rankings overall? The police who defended against these guys, the flying bank robber. Robin dude, the anti-tank guy, the pickpockets who did identity thievery, and then finally the Fast and the Furious gang. Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, Cannon to the Wiz, the pickpocket guys, number one, anti-tank, number two, the flying Red Baron, <laughs> number called, three. It's called a scarf. It's called a scarf. <laughs> the martini in hand. Yeah, exactly. You're really painting him out to be more awesome. He's than I great. Think. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to go right now. I'm going to go. Here, listen. <laughs> Off I go. You know what I like? Things that are easy. Mm. Like eating butter. Cheese. Eating <laughs> since we both went to the same place. Yeah. Late night snacking. <laughs> yeah. Squarespace is like the naughty night cheese. <laughs> Squarespace. <laughs> We're like naughty night cheese. <laughs> right, because they're fast, easy, reliable, man. Working you just on my in. night cheese. <laughs> you slide in at midnight. You're just like, hey man, I have an idea. I want to get out to the world, but I don't want to work too hard. I want it to look good. I want people to compliment me on my style. I want award-winning design, but not have to have any of the talent that comes with that. I want that night cheese. Yes. I want Squarespace. Man, we're just making these hits for I Squarespace. Know. God, this is, you guys are so welcome. Just run with it, Squarespace. We got this. Uh, I'm gonna build a website, jasoneatsbutter.com, where I just sneak <laughs> into people's kitchens in the middle of the night and just go, I'm gonna eat this whole stick of butter because it's amazing. If you have a message about eating butter, then you need the night cheese available from squarespace.com slash rogue. Sign up for a free trial, try it out. If you don't like it, back seas, no problem. Of course you're gonna like it. And more importantly, when you do sign up, make sure to use promo code rogue at checkout, get 10% off. Not promo code night cheese, promo code rogue, because promo code night cheese is uh, yeah, different. Yeah, but, but I mean, you can say the words night cheese breathlessly while you type in mm -hmm. R-O-G-U-E, night cheese. No one knows of your shame. It's okay. Night cheese. They will soon. Hey, don't tell Brian I told you this, but apparently over at scamstuff.com, they still have their holiday prices going on today. And I think it's going to end like any minute now. So you should get in there and get a good deal on those whiskey bullets for that special lady or gentleman in your life.